really astounding to see how many math concepts can actually be used to calculate the feats done by cartoon characters, and how little people actually understand what's going on. So instead of going through complicated math and flashy numbers, let's take a little bit of a sidestep and instead take a look at some math. Stop. Stop. Don't. I swear to God, you better not press that button. Get your back here. Right, so where were we? Let's take a look at some math and physics concepts, which actually go into cartoon characters and how we can extrapolate our knowledge in real life onto cartoon characters, starting off with Richard Watterson. And as a side note, I know the scene is in his head, we're using it as an example. So to make this as entertaining as possible, I'll try to keep it short and simple, starting now. Too intense, I'll dial it back a little bit. So first, we need a general overview of momentum and what it really means in a physics perspective. Momentum in itself is defined as the mass times velocity of an object, or how fast it's going multiplied by how fat it's going. Aside from this, you can use momentum to find force, which is what we did. Force is just mass times acceleration. Acceleration is just velocity divided by time. So if we replace acceleration with velocity divided by time, we have force is mass times velocity divided by time. We know that mass times velocity is just momentum. So now we know force is just the change in momentum over time. Very cool. If we go back to the scene presented, we know Richard has a speed and a mass, and we know he changes his momentum from some number to zero in some time. This is what we use to find the force and is a great representation of how we can use literal real life physics to find the force and technically strength of a cartoon character by simply using the principles of physics. Another example we could use to find so-called strength of a cartoon character would be Saitama. And we once again can use the idea of momentum, a key and integral portion of physics, which can once again be extrapolated into cartoon and anime characters to find their so-called strength and power. For Saitama, it's really interesting to see how we can use conservation of momentum ideas again and actually apply them in real life, or real enough life. Some of us live in our screens, you know. So that's besides the point. What's really interesting to see is that instead of just churning away numbers, we can instead find elegant solutions and apply them to the case using basic knowledge of physics. We know about momentum again, and now we can also state conservation of momentum, which doesn't just come from anywhere, but instead actually comes from Newton's third law, if we go back to our idea of forces, we know that force is just a change in momentum over the change in time. And from Newton's third law, we know that every force has an equal and opposite reaction. Guy slaps car, car slaps guy back with loans and interest. Equal and opposite. So besides that, we can instead substitute in the change in momentum as momentum final minus momentum initial. And this will be equal to the negative change in momentum of a different object. So basically, the change in momentum initially minus the change in momentum finally for a system will always equal zero, showing that the final momentum equals the initial momentum and momentum is conserved. Now, we can use this idea of momentum conservation with Saitama, and we see that upon contact, the initial momentum must equal the final momentums. And when Saitama goes through the meteor, we'll just use letters instead of numbers to be more elegant. He has a velocity, and when he stops moving, him and the meteor are basically at zero velocity. So Saitama's initial momentum equals the momentum of the meteor, as shown above. And through this, we can solve for Saitama's velocity, since we know momentum is just mass multiplied by velocity. We can also find Saitama's change in momentum, which can help us find the force as well. Now, using this change in momentum idea, we can again find the force applied on the meteor by Saitama by seeing how long it takes for Saitama to stop the meteor, which can then give us the force on Saitama as well. And even more interesting is instead of power scaling, we can find the literal POWER by knowing that power is the change in energy over the change in time. So power equals energy divided by time. Now, if we're really lazy and don't want to find a time, but we know the force Saitama applied onto the meteor, we could solve for time in our previous equation and substitute that value instead for the power for Saitama. And then we'd find that power is just the kinetic energy times force divided by momentum. 
And this is nice because we then don't even need to know the mass and all we really need is the velocity. And through this, we know even further that kinetic energy is just one half m velocity squared and momentum is just mass times velocity. So we substitute these in and we find that the power Saitama uses is his initial velocity times the force he uses divided by time. So it's a really great demonstration to see that instead of just finding big numbers, we can actually look at the intuition behind some of these ideas and how they relate to cartoon characters. An astounding thing to see is that just by using one or two concepts, we can create so many different ways of looking at cartoon characters and finding their so-called physical stats, or power, in a physics perspective. Mm -hmm.